And, uh, but you never know what goes on in a, in a life in a seven-day period. You never know what, what is going on behind the smile in some of y'all's world. And uh, so it's our desire this morning. It's not, uh, it's not my desire just to say what I want to say with words. It's my desire to say what the Holy Ghost would have me say to try to feed you and help you and challenge you and uh, that the Spirit may draw you. Amen. It takes the Spirit to draw us. You can take a man that's well learned and stir up tears by telling stories. But if you're ever going to get your heart right, it's going to take the Word. One verse of Scripture, I feel like the Lord has really, I read this, uh, this is a very familiar passage and you know me by now. I'm one of them preachers that most of the time preach where there's a story in the Bible, that's just who I am. And uh, so you pray for us and God has zeroed us in on this one verse and uh, it's good to see you here this morning. How about the church? Are you going to pray for me? I need it this morning. Verse number 30 of uh, Matthew chapter 14. Verse number 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Save me. That's all that I want to read. Thank you for standing. And uh, I'm just going to try to go. And I and uh, I, I don't like having to preach by faith, but I'm going to have to do that this morning. That God will just funnel through me whichever direction He wants me to go. And uh, you say that don't sound right. No, it don't. It don't feel right. But I just know that God, uh, Brother Ethan, has given me this scripture, and uh, I want to be a vessel that He can just pour it through me. And uh, as as you need it, and as I uh, as what whatever it is that needs to be put in your mailbox on your, on your avenue that God would help me, that God did give me, amen, this just before I got up off the seat, amen, he gave me a thought to try to glean from on, I don't know if I can do this or not, amen, that's what I want to uh, preach from this morning, amen, now if you'll look at this scripture and if you'll back up just a little, if you've been a Bible reader any length of time, amen, and if you've not, I'm going to try to help you here just a minute, amen, Jesus come into this world and uh, he was a miracle worker I mean Jesus never done anything amen he never come up on a situation that he didn't know how to handle he never came up on a situation that he didn't have an answer for amen there never was anybody that was so low that he couldn't bring them up and there never was anybody so high that he couldn't bring them down amen I'm so glad Jesus came into the world uh, to make a level playing ground at a place called Calvary Jesus came into the world amen to bring in people that wasn't welcome Jesus Jesus came into the world, amen, to blind the the Jewish people in part uh, that the Gentiles could be brought in, amen. Us as Gentile people, I was no more than dogs. The Bible said cut off, amen, from the commonwealth of Israel having no hope, amen. So Jesus came into the world, amen, to make that veil in the temple, amen, from a barrier to an open door. Jesus came, amen, to raise up the dead. Jesus came everywhere Jesus went. He made a difference, amen. He never made foot tracks, amen, that I was thinking this morning, amen, the woman over there at the well, the Bible said Jesus be weary with his journey, amen, brother Johnny, Jesus was a man that if he had come into the world and wanted to, he could have went the whole 33 years and never got weary, amen, but he wanted us to know, amen, that he was made flesh and dwelled among us, he was a man like we was, but a God that had so much power, amen, that he could, his voice could leap over death and raise Lazarus, amen, he was a God that he wanted everybody to know, you can put your faith and trust in me, amen, the little children cried Hosanna and they said do you hear what they're saying he said oh yeah amen perfected praise that comes out of the babes of of sucklings and he said if these hold their peace the rocks will immediately cry out amen I want to say this morning I don't want no rock to cry out in my place amen I want God to know that I love him and I appreciate him amen I said I want the Lord to know amen I appreciate him coming amen the Bible the Bible said for God a soul loved the world and that he gave his only begotten son but he narrowed it down at a little old place in Crusoe amen when I was a little old boy and he let me know for God so love you and that he gave his 
his only begotten son. And I want to say thank you, Jesus. I don't want no rock crying out in my place. I want to glorify him. Amen. I want to praise him. You say it don't take all of that. Amen. It shouldn't. Amen. Amen. We shouldn't have to pop you and prime you and to get you to worship the Lord. Amen. It ain't about seeing how loud you can be. But it's about glorifying him and thanking him for all that he's done. Look at where he's brought you from. Look at the prayers he's answered for you. Ain't no man can do that. So glorify him. Praise him. Without him we can do nothing. Amen. He said I'm the vine and you are the branches. Without me you can't do nothing. So thank you Lord for doing everything you've done just for me. Amen. Amen. Jesus everywhere he went made a difference. Amen. So the passage of scripture right before this one he finds himself in a multitude, the Bible said, of about 5,000 besides women and children. And his disciples, being 12 of them, amen, was following him around watching all this. I mean, I'd like to have seen it. Hey, wouldn't you? I'd like to have seen him one, following him around one day and him say, feed all these people. Spirit's a little different this morning, so I might as well just slow down a little. Feed all these people. He said, we ain't got nothing to feed these people. 500 pennies worth of bread wouldn't feed this crowd. I just like to feed them now. 500 pennies worth wouldn't feed me. <laughs> hey, but you know what he said? Ain't nothing around here. Nobody got nothing. Andrew started looking around. Here's a little old boy. He got a, five loaves and two feet. Oh, that's enough. That'll be plenty. You've lost your mind. Not in God's hands. Amen. He took five loaves and two fishes, asked the blessing, gave them to the disciples, and said, hand them out. The Bible said they all eat until they're filled. And he took up 12 baskets full, one for every disciple. Come on, talk to me. Amen. Amen. They went in there evidently, Homer, empty, but they left full. Because of what Jesus done, you might as well look at me and tell me this morning. Amen. There's been times in my life I've been around y'all long enough to know. I've been through the struggle with you. I've seen you struggle. Amen. I was standing there the day you got out of prison. Amen. How good that it felt. I've been there with you, buddy, standing in the courtroom. I've been there with you when your spouse walked off and leave you. Amen. I know. Amen. I'm hurting with you. Amen. When you feel so empty that you don't know what to do, and they ain't no way. They ain't no Nobody can put any, give you any words of encouragement. But there's a God, amen. When the world says there ain't no way, he'll give you a basket to walk off with. Amen. How can you explain a God that gives you peace when it don't make sense? Woo, hallelujah. Amen. When the world is dark, amen, he'll still give you a song in the night. Hallelujah. I want to say there's a God, amen, that'll give you what you need for every circumstance. Amen. So God's a God. Amen. He's beautiful. For situation, whatever the situation is, he's beautiful, he's lovely, amen. I'm glad he's everything you ever needed, and a whole lot more, amen. Amen. He said, Now I'm gonna get to my message right here, amen. I know it's simple, but this is what the Lord wanted me to give you. I just feel like encouraging somebody this morning, amen. He said, I want you to get in that boat and go to the other side. In the book of Acts, chapter number 27, Brother Joe, Paul said, we don't need to lose. There's going to be a storm. We may die. But Jesus sent his disciples into one knowing there's going to be one. So you ain't going to get around every one of them. I want to say thank you, Jesus, for halting me many, many, many times. Amen. Just long enough for danger to get out of the way. We went down the road yesterday coming over here to the church. My wife had a million things going in her mind and trying to get everything together. And we just got a little ways from the house. And Kendra said, did you remember such and such? She said, no. I had every intention of getting it as I walked out and I forgot. I turned in the driveway, backed up and headed back up the road. Amen. With no time to spare. I had to say, thank you, Lord, because I'll never know what could have happened around the next curve. But you have to know that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. So go ahead and thank him for that car and pulled out in front of you and it got you aggravated. Amen. Come on, Brother Joe Larkin. He said it aggravates me and it does me too, but who knows what may have happened over the next hill. Amen. God 
sometimes will make himself so obvious and work a miracle in front of your eye. Amen. But there's so many more that you ain't never seen. And he does it because, well, hallelujah, because he loves you. Amen. He don't do it because he has to. He does it because he wants to. Amen. All that men would praise the Lord. So this morning, so can I stop a minute and say, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefit. He said, my storehouse is full. You'll never bankrupt heaven because there's a God filling her up. Amen. He said, his mercy is new every morning. Thank God I'm glad. He said, by the way, I'm the bride and the morning star. I'm the lily of the valley. I'm everything you ever dreamed of. So can you praise him a minute and say, he's been everything I could ever imagine. I'm so thankful he's been there for me. Amen. I want to say thank you, Lord. Heard your testimony. You'll never know. And don't even ask him. Sometimes it don't matter. He tells you don't go. Just don't go. Amen. Don't turn down that street. The Lord told me a long time ago to quit coming up with a golf course over there. Because I come out there one morning, there's a big bush. And I almost pulled out in front of somebody. And I felt the Lord speak to me and said, don't go that way no more. So there's been many times Joe and Kimmy Dome's racing me to try to see who can get here quicker. So here we come. We're very, very, very seldom early. Can I get an amen? That's all right. We went to revival last week for two solid weeks, and that preacher got up and said, there's something wrong with Brother Jason and Brother Dale. And I didn't know what was going on. He said they've been early every night, and they ain't never early to nothing. Well, the last night, Jason broke the mold, obviously. He was late. But anyhow, where was I going? Huh? Oh, yeah, side street. So Joe and Kimmy don't, here we come. And, and, the, and me, as Dale, wants to cut up that side street because I don't want them to beat me. But it don't matter. Because God said, don't do that. And it don't really matter why. He's guiding me around something. Or either that or he just wants me to see if I will listen and obey. Amen. It don't make no difference what the end result's going to be. Will I just obey? So, hey, if they beat me every time, get out of the vehicle laughing at me. Amen. You know one thing. They took the shortcut and I didn't because God told me not to. Because God's going to keep me out of something. Can I get a witness? God will put somebody in your life to say you don't need to go that way. Because if you do, there's going to be hurt. Don't go there. Just stay away. They'll be hurt. And there's, there's, there's two parts to every party. So if the second half of the party decides to go that way anyway and there's hurt, it's not, it's not the messenger's fault. I'm going to let that sink in. There's a whole lot of things everybody in this building could have avoided if you would have just listened. Don't do that. Don't go down there. Who do they think they are? We're living in a whole other century. He's 90 years old. Who in the world does he think he is telling me to know, do that and not to do that? And now that you get in a wreck, you, you automatically, your mind will go back to that and say, I wished I would have listened. Amen. Amen. That's enough of that. I'm going to go on. But there's sometimes God will put you in the boat spiritually and send you into a storm knowing that it's coming. But in the midst of every one of them red, there's a miracle if we'll just look for it. Amen. The Bible tells us he got out there in the middle that they did out there in the middle of that storm and the Bible tells us amen that in the book of Mark if you'll read it, the account the Bible said that Jesus was alone on the mountain praying. Amen. He told them to go ahead while he sent the multitude away and the Bible said he saw them. Amen. He saw them toiling and rowing. But in the fourth watch of the night, my question is, Brother John Thomas, if he sees 
sees me struggling, how come he's waiting so long to help me? Amen, come on, talk to me. Amen, if God knows what I'm going through, and then how come that he ain't come to my rescue? Uh, can I tell you, I don't know when he's coming, but I say he's on the way. I say he's on the way. I say hallelujah. Amen, how do I know I'm gonna make it? Because his word said, go to the other side. He didn't say you would have opposition, but he did say there's another side. How many say hallelujah? There's a storm raging, but I plan on seeing what's on the other side. Amen, it may seem dark. It may seem like God within a million miles, but if he said go to the other side, he'll meet you on the other side. Hallelujah. Amen. In the midst of this storm, they were thinking about turning back. Can you prove that? I think I can. Because he said, I'm going to go up here on the hill and I'm going to pray. Brother Johnny, the Bible said he came to them walking on the sea. He just came from where they came from. And in order for them to see him, they had to be looking backwards. But God had them in a place, Tom, to where they're already halfway there. So what are we going to gain by turning back? It's just as far on as it is back. Amen. Can I go ahead and encourage you? Amen. They ain't nothing in turning back for you. I said they ain't quit looking back. Quit looking back. I said they ain't nothing. They quit thinking about turning back. You say, I know what it is to turn back. Well, tell me what you found by turning back. Not one thing. Amen. So struggle on. I say struggle on. Amen. I say help is on the way. 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 God knows exactly where you are. And when you never dreamed he was within a million miles, He'll come walking up to your vessel and say, peace, be still, amen. Hallelujah, amen. They were afraid. Notice I said they. Amen. But it ain't gonna be long. The Bible said they looked and they saw him come and thought it was a spirit. He automatically spoke to them, said it is I, be of good cheer, be not afraid. Amen. The Bible said in the book of Mark, he would have passed them by. Ain't that amazing? I'm struggling, and you're going to walk by? You ever passed anybody that you knowed changing the tar and didn't stop? Don't dare ever tell them if you do. I was pulling up a track hoe one time, and there's a fellow that, that I knew that was a block mason. I couldn't get off the road. And uh, I passed him, and them traffic was crazy. And we got to the job in a little while. I said, I seen you out there on the side of the road. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Son, he jumped on me with both feet, and you saw me struggling and didn't stop. His van didn't weigh but 40,000 pounds overweight because it's like my truck had everything under the sun, and it shouldn't have been in it. I'm going to get myself right here. Amen. He had notepads laying all over, but he couldn't find them. So on the side of his van was his notebook. I got one of them too. On the top of my track hoe, on the side, phone numbers everywhere. He was struggling. I didn't stop. You ever felt like that with Jesus? I'm going somewhere. Have you ever been in church and you're struggling with everything in you to live right? And you wipe your, the tears on your pillow at night before you go to bed. As you're going to sleep, the tears are puddling up and wetting that pillow. And you come to church and you see God come over here and camp out over here. Amen. And it looks like he literally just walked past you. Amen. It's like he don't even realize you're there. Amen. Come on, talk to me. Amen. The Bible said the man come to Jesus and said, my daughter lies at the point of death. Will you come and heal her? He said, I will. But on the way up the road, there's a woman that had had an issue of blood for 12 years that come crawling up behind him and halted him just long enough for that woman, that little girl to die over there. Amen. The master of the house come and said, trouble him no more for she's dead. Amen. I guess that person 
person was over there said if they hadn't have been bothering him, he could have made it in time. Can I tell you, there ain't no such thing as being late with God. Hallelujah. He may be four days late, but he'll always be on time. When he shows up, it'll be on time. Amen. Don't you put a time clock on him. He knows what he's doing. And when he leaves, there'll be more glory to him instead of on you. Amen. Can I say God knows what he's doing. You just got to depend on him to make the right move in your world. Amen. Amen. But he saw that he's afraid. And he sees some of you are afraid. And can I say this morning, it's okay to be afraid. It's okay. Sister Christy Johnson, I know she don't mind me saying this because she told it on the radio. She said, my kids is afraid of the storm. She said, when it starts storming, when they were little, I'd hear them say, Mom, can I come get in the bed with you? Said, I'd say, sure. They'd get out of their bed with lightning flashing. And they'd come crawl in the bed with me. It didn't change the storm. It's just the presence of somebody else. She said, some nights, Brother David, the storm would be rolling and the thunder and the wind a blowing and the trees a swarping and they'd be sound asleep. But she said, I'd be laying there in the bed and said, I'd get up and go get in the bed with him. Well, bless the Lord. Have you ever felt the Lord? Amen. When you felt like your world's going to turn upside down, the preacher couldn't preach a message good enough to break through. But in the midnight hour, hey, I said in the midnight hour, he would come put his arm around you. Amen. When you can't get to him, he can come to you. Praise the Lord. I want to say bless the Lord, oh my soul. He knows where you are and he knows what you need and he won't never leave you hanging. You won't drown depending on him. Amen. I didn't mean to take all that much time to get to where I'm coming. But here's where I'm coming to. Peter said, if it be you, bid me to come. My message this morning is I don't know if I can do this or not. This whole time in this scripture, they've been scared to death. But now it's about to get personal. As a whole, you read the news, you watch the news, whatever it is you do as a whole, as a church people, you, it'll, it'll scare you because of the things we see coming. We look at the babies under our arms and in our laps and we're thinking if they live to be 30 year old, what in the world will this world be? Did you ever dream you'd ever see the world in the shape it's in now? In the last 25 years, it has blown my mind that the things that is allowed in this world, amen, they call evil good and good evil. The church has got worldly and the world has got churchy. They don't seem to be no difference. What are we going to do? i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to stay in the boat. We're going to stay in the boat. Nobody said it's going to be easy, but if you'll stay in the boat, we'll see the other side. Amen. Hallelujah. Come. Come. So Peter, and this is, this is my message, the Bible said Peter coming down out of the boat stepped out on the water. He stepped out on his word. I don't know if I can do this. Because my scripture says, and it's almost like it don't make no sense to me. He saw the wind boisterous. He saw that for the last, 20, for the last 12 hours. I mean, we've been in a storm. We can't get nowhere. And now I'm looking around and I see it wild. You know why? Because he's out of his comfort zone. He's away from grabbing anything that he just left from. And he's got to totally depend on the word that that man said come. I, want to, I feel like telling somebody right here, and I'm just following the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. There's things in this Christian life that these people that says, I just don't think I can do it. You know why? Because we're still holding on. I watched Kayla when she was a little old girl. Anybody know what a skim board is? Michael, my brother-in-law. Well, y'all ain't don't know nothing. You know what a skim board is? Sure you do. It's a little piece of plywood, and you throw it out on the surf and shh, ride that thing. She she got to where she could ride it down at the down at the beach, throw it in that little surf as it come rolling in. I've tried walking on the water. I tried riding a bicycle on the water. 
I started down through there as fast as I could go. Right for the ocean. I went as hard as I could go and I made it about like here from to here to Ain't Alice. And the last thing they saw was my heels. I don't care how expensive of a bicycle you have. I don't care how fast you can run. I don't care how good you can swim. You can't walk on water. You can't do it. I've tried it. I've tried it. You can't. See, it's not a problem when you've got the, the bank right there. Everybody laughs at you. You just get up like a dummy and walk back over there. You're back over here. You've got skimp places all over you, but they're laughing at you and you're laughing with them. But now when you're in the midst of the sea, it's different. They ain't nothing to turn back to, Red. I've got to depend on that. Can I tell you here this morning, you say, I just don't know if I can do this or not. You can't. So just get that out of your mind. You can't because this flesh is made with a sinful nature. But in order for you to have victory in that man that says, come, you've got to let go of everything, everything. Come on, talk to me. You've got to let go of everything that you're holding on to that's anchored down in the world. Amen. You've got to burn all the bridges going back to the world. You've got to totally say, I'm going to that man. Nobody said that the storm was going to lay down, but Jesus will help you. The word he gave us that we read from, you can be an overcomer. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. You can't do this by yourself. But can I say you're not going to have to. He's going to be there with you. His word will bring you through the rough places in life. Amen. The Bible said he saw the wind boisterous. He was afraid. And he began to sink. And he cried. Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus, reaching forth and picked him up and said, oh, ye of little faith. But my scripture today is, you see the things around you and say, I can't do this. And you become afraid. There's been a lot of altar calls that I've given in this past revival we was just in. On Wednesday night, Brother Jason preached a message, and he said, is there any lost people in the building that would like for the revival to go on? If you do, I'm going to count to ten. Raise your hand and we'll go on. If not, we're shutting it down. I wasn't there, I was here. But when he got to about eight, the pastor's son raised his hand. I'm lost. Please keep it going. He's a, he's a teenager. I don't know how old he is. Big old young man. I went back that next night. I'll be honest, my body's destroyed. I mean, war slam out. I was working over at a job and uh, just trying to get my mind zeroed in on what I was supposed to preach and all that and let's rack it on every hand. But I heard the Holy Ghost speak in my ear and say, throw the lifeline out one more time. So I went down there that night and I preached on dying this close to home. And I pulled a 100-foot tape back through that church. And from the altar to the back door was 41 feet. I preached that night the best I could do and I beckoned with everything in me to come. I'm talking about a pastor's son. And I was just fixing to shut the meeting down and I watched him get up out of his seat and come give his heart and life to the Lord. And I said, how hard is it? The devil in his mind, you know what he's telling him? You can't do it. You can't do it. I mean, played music in church. His daddy's a pastor. Amen. How hard is it? Amen. Some of you know what it is to be way down yonder in the world. Amen. I mean, that you, I can just go on till daylight the things that you've done. Amen. The devil telling you in your mind with, uh, with all the withdrawals you're going to go through, you know how it is. You can't live two minutes without it. You can't live 12 hours without it. Do you really think you're going to turn from it and walk away? You can't do it. And he'll put it in your mind. I can't do this. I can't do this but how many can say amen I know I couldn't but I decided I was tired of living in the world I was tired I was ready to go walking towards somebody different amen as boisterous as the world may be I'm glad I admit it I'm seeking I may be afraid but Jesus is right there if you'll call on him Lord save me he'll reach immediately and bring you up and you'll never be the same again hallelujah 
Amen. As he begins to play. Amen. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I've been with some of you in the critical care unit. And in our own self, we say, I just don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can handle walking back there again. And I know y'all don't mind me using you. Please don't. I got married down there in the jail. I've been up there with you while you're doing my taxes. Well, he was still down there. And they would call. I mean, he wouldn't say nothing. He said, I just want to be a part of your life. I want to hear what's going on and hear the noise. I sat there for hours. Just say a word every once in a while. He just wanted to hear what he couldn't get to. Sometimes in your world, you're thinking, I don't know if I can do this. But wasn't it good after 24 years when they come and let him out of the car? It was worth the wait. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can handle this. I'm talking to somebody I could about come put my hand on you. I feel like these people, you want to, but you're afraid to let go. You see, it's personal right now, you see. Jesus told Peter, come. Everybody throws off on him for sinking. Don't throw off on him for sinking. He's the only one that stepped out. So the world told you how many times you'll never make it. I'll see you back over here in two weeks. Is that what they said? I'll give you two weeks and you'll be back. How long has it been? June the 7th will be 12 years. But you see, you've got to totally surrender. If I sink, I'm going to sink crying, Lord, save me. And if you'll do that, he'll never let you sink. Did you hear me? But you got to let go and say, I'm ready to serve you. While we're all standing to our feet this morning.